So this actually came apart um, pretty easily. I was kind of surprised. Uh, it's kind of interesting too how it's held on. Um, this piece is you know, in the back down here. So like this is the front. This is the front and this is where the pattern goes. And in the back, this piece goes down you know, like somewhere, if you can see that, somewhere like right around here. And then these two things, so they got little tabs on them, they swing out and normally the spring holds them like that. And then they lock in underneath um, the top part of the mechanism. Underneath these things, there's a little groove under here and they lock in there. That's kind of interesting. Um, I took the spring off. Um, I assume it might be possible to, to just, you know, uh, split them out and get them out without taking the spring off, but I took the spring off for to make it easier, especially since I wasn't sure exactly what I was doing. Um, so we're definitely going to have to clean this up. You can see it's pretty bad. Um, these might be a problem. These are little rollers that go down like at the bottom here so that they wrap your paper around the bottom. Um, you can see they're pretty pretty unhappy. I've got to split down the side. So does this one. So I'm going to um, I'm going to try and clean some of the rust off of these things. They're shafts. And then also I'm going to see if there's any way I can, I'm probably gonna try like some lacquer thinner or something, see if I can soften the rubber up a little bit. Um, I don't expect it to close these gaps though, so I'll have to see if that's gonna be a problem or not. Um, the rest of this, I'll see what I can clean up. I'm not sure if I wanna take this all the way apart. Um, you know, it's has already been working or sitting here on my bench for about a week waiting for the parts machine to show up. I'm not sure if I want to let it sit around any longer. If I put these in like a, a rust dissolving bath or something, that'll take a while for it to eat all the rust off. So I'm not sure. We'll have to see where we go with that. You see, I put a blue ribbon in here. And um, how I did that is I just got a set of multicolored uh, typewriter ribbons. And then I took a little piece of the blue typewriter ribbon and just wrapped it on these spools. Um, I don't think it would be worthwhile for me to, you know, fill the whole spool up. I just put, you know, enough on that we can use it, or that I can use it, and whatever I feel like it, and not have to worry about, you know, wasting a whole bunch of ribbon on this, because it's not going to get used very much, and since the ribbon is exposed, it eventually will dry out. So, I just put a little, a little bit on enough to use it, but not so much that I'm going to be wasting a lot of ribbon. Um, and the ribbons that I got are from this company. Um, I'm going to read the little description there. I got these off eBay. And this particular set I think came with black, blue, green, red, pink, purple, and orange. Uh, so far I've put the green uh, in the Lago Marcino Totalia calculator. So you can see that one now prints in green. That's that ribbon that was in there was toast. So, since the ribbon that was in here is toast, I put a blue one in. We'll see how that works. No, I'm not sure if I can show this, but the ribbon does have auto levers. So, that's the purpose behind this kind of funny track it goes through. So, normally, um, oops. So, you can see this wheel is turning and taking up the ribbon. Now, I'm not sure if I can show this or not, but see, well, it's going to be pretty hard. Um, basically, if this wheel were to stop, then this would get taut, and you can see this thing pulls up. See how this is up? This thing pulls up like that. When this the ribbon gets taut and pulls on this, and what that should do is, if it's going to work, no, it's not. It did work. Wait. So we're going this way. I had it backwards. So if it's going 
this way. You can see it's taking up on this spool. And then if this were to get taut and that pulls up, and I go, this should, see how it pushes, it pushed this little peg over, and now the ribbon's going the opposite direction with this spool taking up, and it has the same setup on the other side. So I thought that was pretty cool. Now we'll get this. Flip around here. You can see, um, I didn't do a whole lot of cleaning on this machine, just you know, a little bit of cleaning. But this machine is considerably dirtier. Um, this machine is much dirtier than this one was when I got this. Um, you can look over the mechanism. It's got a lot more dirt down in there than what this one had. This one just wiped that out a little bit, but there definitely is more dirt in here than there was in here when I got this one. And you can also see, you know, the much larger capacity of this one versus that one. And also, oops, how this one has, you know, all six function keys, where this one only has three. If you look down in there, it almost looks down in the bottom like there's mold or something down there, the little white patchy spots. So, yeah. Um, I was just getting back to putting the carriage back together, but I wanted to also show, see if it has it on here. There's an interesting way of holding the ribbon on, you know, usually, like on the typewriter ones, No adding with it. So you just have a little spear in there and the ribbon goes on the spear and it holds it on. This is a blue ribbon by the way. So you can see even if I took some off to fill this up, there's still you know a good amount of ribbon on there. Um, what they do is they have the center of the spool is splined like that, and they just have a little metal clip like here that clamps on and grips the ribbon against the um, striations there. That was the first time I've seen that. I'm just used to the spear kind. So I just wanted to show that. As far as putting the hat and the assembly back together, it's not really a carriage, although I guess technically in this machine it is a carriage because it does move a little bit. So you can see this is where those uh, rollers go. I'm not sure if they're going to be any good or not. They're, they're pretty cracked, so we'll have to see if they work. Okay, so I got the carriage in. Um, probably easiest to show you how it fits in on the other machine. So you can see right here there's a little kind of cutout with a lip on top. So there's a lip on the front of the carriage that's, that goes in there and locks in. And then the um, that square bottom part that, uh, that goes underneath the bar for the sliding, uh, that goes in here, and then, like I said, those two little tabs lock in underneath there. So, now that it's in, you can release and slide it. So it locks in there, and then it locks in there. With your two options, unless you want it just free floating. So the only places it locks in. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to load paper in it now without those two little rollers in the front because the paper is probably just going to want to you know, come out the bottom and not wrap around the front. Uh, we could try. Um, this is going to have to come back off for me to put the case back on anyway, so I just wanted to give a little test fit and it seems like it should be okay. Now I don't think I have any numbers entered, so if I pull the handle on here it should just uh, drive it forward, I'll set it, in, yeah, set it in the one position, so I should just drive it forward one position which it does. So that seems good. Oh, I did forget to mention that there's a bar then that goes in this little slot here. This is what drives the uh, mechanism forward. So if I can show that on here. Hmm. 
Yeah, it's gonna be hard to see. I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see it or not. So, this piece right here, all the way in the back there, that's what has a little cutout on it. And then this bar, if I slide this over, and now maybe you can see it. So you see this bar, this is the end of the bar right here, that goes in that little groove. And then if you watch, when I drive the machine, it will pull that bar and that's what's going to actuate the um, advancement. So, I'm going to see if I can get some paper loaded in here. Um, I do still have to put this plate back on the bottom and put the keyboard back together. But I think we are getting close. So, of course the post machine is missing pieces. I'm missing the rod that goes through to hold the paper up. So hopefully this will work temporarily. Um, actually, the paper loaded pretty easy, even without those little rollers in the front, so... Um, and this seems to have a nice grip on the paper. Unfortunately, my ice pick does not have a nice grip on the paper roll. So that's going to be... the socket will work pretty well. Um, let's just see what happens. Got all printed, one, two, three. Papers falling off again. So it's printing, that's good. This is not good, come on. So that's the right answer. Um, if you add up on, stop it. If you add up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the same thing in reverse, uh, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, it should be three, 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 zero, which it is. And if we do a total. All right. So that looks successful. Um, seems to be printing just fine. Seems to be adding just fine. We got the right answer. So as a preliminary test, that seems to be good. Um, gonna work on putting the keys back on and see if I can rig something up better than this, at least for temporary testing. So this is the case from the spare parts one. You can see the logo is pretty faint on this glass, and this is actually a piece of glass. You can see the back side of it there held in. And the reason why it's so faint is because it's a sticker, and the sticker fell off. I found that down in the bottom of the machine. Um, it's kind of interesting on this one, how the glass is clear um, around the sticker, because on the first one, you can see it's painted black, and on this one, you can see the black paint there, and this one looks like it's a, a piece of paper just stuck on there. I'm not sure if it's a sticker or just a labeled piece of paper. Um, this one is, I'm not sure if you can see it, it is kind of delaminating a little bit, you know, near the top. I think I'm going to just leave that alone, um, rather than mess with it and risk it falling off altogether. Now, if it does fall off in the future, then I'll have to figure something out about that. Also, I found in the spare post machine a penny. It's the old style with the um, the wheat uh, things on the back of it. So you can oops. Let's see if we can find a year on here. Switch it out. So if I get it in the camera, looks like 1944. So, there you go, buy an old calculator and you can get a free penny from 1944. Okay, 
So I switched the cases. The case from the post machine was in much nicer condition, so I switched the glass from the original case into that case and cleaned it up, and I think it'll be okay. There is just a little bit of scuffing, I think, right down there in the corner. Um, you can also see on this one, there is this label here. basically says if you pull the handle back to where this arrow points, um, then that'll clear the keyboard. It's kind of hard to read, but... So that's how the other machine would clear out, and I think it works on this machine too. My tripod is not working. Um, so if you, you enter, if you just pull the handle up, see it clears out what you just entered. So we got that. Um, you can see these things cleaned out pretty nice in the um, the rust removal juice. So I think we are ready to set this back on here. I'm going to get it off camera if it's going to be a little bit of fiddling. Okay, so let's try this guy out. I'm spacing too many spaces. I'll set that to one. Okay, so we've got our subtotal. If I hold down total, that looks right. So there we go. So adding seems to work okay, although you did notice that I had to pull the handle an extra time for a subtotal. I'm not sure if that's designed or not. You can try it here, four, five, six. So I should be able to pull it once. And now I should get a subtotal this time. And I do. So I wonder why it didn't work the first time. I can try the calculation again. So we should have nothing there, which we don't have nothing. Okay. So I do an empty point, and now I should get a subtotal this time. I don't. That's how I got a subtotal. So that's interesting. Do a total. I wonder why it does that. I'll just try some random adding. So, now I should get a subtotal, and I do. So that's interesting, I wonder why doing that particular calculation doesn't give a subtotal on the first, on the second blank crank. Let's try it again. Get a subtotal. Oh, there we go. Okay. So that seems to be working now. See, so I did my adding and did one blank crank and then got the subtotal. That's right. And then we held on the total button to get our total. So that seems to work. And that is the right answer, by the way. Uh, we can try basic multiplication. You can do uh, 25 times 25. So we'll put in 25, lock down, repeat, and now we should be able to, we should do this five times. Is that five? I think that was five. Yes, that was five. So now we want to shift over and do it two times. And now we can take repeat off which I should have done first, and we'll just backspace that out. So that's backspaced out, so now we should do our blank crank, 
and got our subtitle, which is correct. So you can see we entered 25 five times, shifted over one time by pressing the zero key, entered it two times, and we got our correct total of 625. So that works. So I think this machine is pretty much good. We can try a couple of these extra features here. We do one, two, three. Uh, we can do four, five, six. We'll hold down non-print. So now our total should be one, two, three plus four, five, six, which it looks like it is five, seven, nine. Uh, yeah, that looks right. So we can try non-add. We'll do seven, eight, nine as non-add. So now we should have the same subtotal, which we do. So that seems to work. Um, lock just locks out the keyboard. So that's okay. Now uh, we know the total works. Uh, we know the backspace works. If I well, let's clear this out. So if I enter one four three, but instead I wanted one two three, I can backspace that and push the two three, and I one two three, and I do. So that seems to work. So I think this machine can be declared a success. Um, and you did see before, I accidentally had this set on two and instead of one up here on the. You can see that. This thing, I had to set the two instead of one, so that's why I was double spacing in the beginning. So I set it to one and now it's single spacing, so that's correct. Um, I'll just put this little piece of wire here to hold the paper up. That seems to be working okay. So I think this machine can be declared successful. Um, I think I mentioned the um, auto clearing, or not the auto clearing, the, if you wanted to clear the whole keyboard because you made a mistake, if I entered, some mumbo jumbo when I wanted to clear that out. I pull it up and then there's like a little detent here. And then it should go back on its own, it didn't. But um, when you pull it up to that point and then it goes back, it clears out the keyboard. You can watch the little pointer there. So I pull it up here and then release, you can see it clears it out. Um, so I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but this is the first machine to use this uh, square 10 key layout. Um, the other machines before this that used 10 key had two rows of the numbers. This is the first one to use this layout that is common today. So I think that is about it for this repair. It seems to be fully functional at this point. And just for size comparison, we've got the Bros Class 3, the Sunstrand, and the Swift down the end there. Kind of like a, a top view of their footprints. So, um, the Swift there is definitely much smaller than the Sunstrand, even though they both do basically the same thing. I mean, the Sunstrand has a little bit extra functionality like non-add and non-print, uh, whereas the Swift has a displayed register. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.